Greetings and welcome to another Dev Bootstrap screencast. In this screencast, we're going to cover the solid principles. What are the solid principles? Well, they are basically an acronym for the five most important design principles when using object-oriented programming. These are the five principles that were introduced by Robert C. Martin, otherwise known as Uncle Bob, in his year 2000 paper, Design Principles and Design Patterns. Now, these principles, when combined together, and that's important, that's when they are combined together, actually make a big difference to the application that you're building. They make it easier for the programmer to develop software that is easy to maintain and extend, and they also make it easier for developers to avoid things like code smells and um, make it much easier to refactor code. And as we work through each of these five principles in this screencast series, we will see how the code starts to uh, evolve into something which you can see the benefits. You can see how it becomes easier to refactor. You can see how it becomes easier to consider making changes to certain parts of the code and certain parts of the application without actually affecting other parts of the application. And it makes for a much more pleasant developer um, and um, coding experience overall. It also makes it much easier for the team to grow, to add new team members if you follow such uh, patterns because these patterns help make the code much more readable. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to cover in this screencast the single responsibility principle. So let's delve into that. So what is the single responsibility principle? Well, the single responsibility principle basically defines that a class should have a single responsibility, obviously. Um, but what is that responsibility supposed to be defined as? Well, if we take the definition of responsibility as having a reason to change, then that is a nice way to review our classes and to see what are the reasons for change. And then we can extract out those reasons for change into classes that should do one thing and do that thing very well. A good example of a ecosystem that uses and has applied the single responsibility pattern very, very well is the command line library of Linux operating system or Unix um, operating system. Uh, and if you think about it, each of the commands that you know and love in, in, in Linux and Unix does one thing and does one thing very, very well. So the grep command, for example, is very good at searching through text files and giving you pattern matching, and it does that very, very well. And if you wanted to build more complex applications using the Linux command line tools, you can build, you can combine them together into a bash script, or you can pipe them together on the terminal using pipes, and that allows you to make larger, more complex systems made up of these smaller modules that are essentially following the single responsibility principle. So um, I have included everything that we are doing in this screencast in this repository here. It's under Dev Bootstrap as always. And just quickly to let you know that in this repository, I follow from a, an example application that hasn't um, been um, refactored in any way. So it's an application where everything is thrown in, there's been no consideration of solid, and that is in the start folder here. And this application is basically a file system application. It's a f like a file manager. We'll take a look at it in a second. But what I want to just quickly run through now is that uh, this repository here, you can follow through the full solid principles by starting off at start and then going through each of the folders one by one to see how the application evolves until the very end in this conclusion folder here. And this will give you a great example of solid. And these screencasts that I'm making right now basically are in addition to this, and they follow this, um, this repository. And so today, in this screencast, we're going to follow the single responsibility principle. Let's head over to that repository. So I've got it cloned here, and I've got the start folder open and the SRC folder open. And I'm taking a look at the file store. 
And remember, the file store is the application, the example application, before any refactoring has actually been applied. So this is basically, you know, perhaps a, a developer has put this together, perhaps they put it together quickly as a prototype, perhaps they, um, uh, you know, they didn't know or didn't apply the solid principles. And so we end up with this, we end up with this class. Now, it doesn't look too bad at first glance. It's not very long. It doesn't have many fun functions in there. Um, it doesn't look overly complex, but it has not followed solid. And more importantly for today's uh, video, it does not follow the single responsibility principle. And we will find that out as we review it right now. So we're gonna go through this class and find out what are the reasons for it to change. So let's have a look at the functions of this class. And remember, as I mentioned, this class's uh, job, if you like, the application's job or functionality at a high level is to store data based on an ID and a string. So it stores uh, data uh, as, as a text file on the file system and it stores it in a cache, okay? And, it, and the application also logs out the information. Okay, so if we look at the save method, we can see that it's doing just that. Okay, so it takes an ID and it takes a message and it logs out that message and then it will write the file to the disk. Okay, and it also saves it to the cache. All right, so we can see here right off the bat that there are um, essentially three things going on, three different responsibilities already happening in the, even in this single function here. There's the logging, there's the caching, and there is the writing to the disk. And so these are three reasons that this class could change. And actually, if you look at the read method, the read method basically reads the file back from the disk or the cache based on the ID. And again, you can see here it's doing logging, it's reading from the disk, and it's manipulating the cache. So three things. And there is actually a fourth reason for change which isn't quite as apparent, and that is orchestration. Orchestr by orchestration, what I mean is, is that the application itself needs some kind of flow, some kind of understanding of the different parts of the application, the different moving parts. So the different moving parts in this case would be writing to disk, writing to cache, writing to a log system. Okay, and so this orchestration layer can also be another cache. So I've written down the five reasons, uh, sorry, the four reasons for change here. So logging, caching, storage, and orchestration. So what we do is we take that class and we extract out each of these reasons for change one by one and put them into our own class. So let's have a look at the first example, which is logging. So what I've done is I've taken out all of the cases where the, the original file store class uh, does anything with logging. And I've extracted that out and put it into its own store logger class. And I'll show you how this works in a minute in, uh, together with the, ref the full refactored application. But on its own, it's pretty straightforward. I've basically wrapped every single case for logging in its own unique um, uh, sort of domain specific method so we can see that when uh, the message is saved we call the saved log method uh, if the if the uh, message cannot be found then we can say okay we log out did not find if it's missing from the cache we call missing from cache and so on so this is uh, not only extracted out but it's also easier to read from an API point of view because we know that exactly what this logging is doing and why we are calling those logging methods. Okay, so that's the most basic example. Now the other examples, caching, file store, and orchestration are what we are going to cover next. So starting off with the cache. If you look at this class here, again you can see that it's purely focused on caching. There's no other responsibility that this class actually manages based on um, uh, what, it, what, it's, uh, what we've seen in the previous class. So for example, here we can see that it's only dealing with the cache. It's not dealing with writing to disk. 
It's not dealing with orchestration. And it's not dealing per se with the logging. Now, one thing, of course, is that it does take an instance of the store logger, as you notice up here. But that is because we do need to call logging uh, commands throughout the caching process. So here in the get or add, we are logging out that we're reading from the cache, we log out that we are missing from the cache, and so on and so forth. So there is a dependency of the store logger for the store cache, but the, but the store cache does not actually have any logic of the logger. Okay, so that's an important distinction, and, and this is how we can basically make use of different classes even though we have a single responsibility in this, in this particular class. So this is now only dealing with the store cache. Now, if we looked at the next example is the file store. Now you can see that here in this file store class, it is only dealing with saving files to disk. And so there's nothing in here related to caching, and there's no logic or logic handling of the logger, but again, as with the cache class before, the file store cache does take an instance of the logger. And that is so that we can call uh, logging commands as we work through the, 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 the saving and the reading methods, right? But again, we're only writing to the disk. There's nothing in here related to caching. So you might at this point be asking, well, hang on, the application before was actually actually had logic that was related around both the file system and the cache, whereby we would check to see if the file was in cache and return that. And if not, we would read the file from the disk, save it to the cache, and then return the cache. So now if they're separated, how do we do that? And that's the final piece of the puzzle, which is the orchestration. And for the orchestration piece, what I've done is I've created a new class called message store. And this message store is essentially the uh, public facing class of this application, right? This is the class which you would call if you were building an app and you wanted to use this whole application with all the functionality where it handles caching and where it handles saving and logging and everything. This is the class that you would call. It's the orchestration class. You could think of it like the class that you would probably call in the main method of your app. And as you can see, it's very straightforward now. This class actually gives you a very nice overview of the functionality of the behavior of your application. And as you can see, it's far, far cleaner than the original class, the original file store class, where the save method was littered with different responsibilities and different things going on at the same time. This is very, very clean. Now what we're saying is, okay, when we want to save a new message, we, we call save on the file store, which will save it to disk, and we call add or update on the cache, which will add the message to the cache. And that's it. We're done. We know that already internally these classes log, uh, manage the logging as well for us, right? So they, 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 they log any output that we need to know about within their uh, classes as we saw earlier. And as, as you can see here in the constructor of, of this uh, class, we do create an instance of the logger and we pass that instance into the file store and the cache store classes. So that's how our save method becomes simply two lines of code. And the read method becomes this. It just simply checks if the cache uh, exists, if the, f if the file exists in the cache, and if it does not, then we read it from the disk, add it to the cache, and then we return the cache. So subsequent calls to this method will naturally just get from the cache. So this is, as you can see, and I hope you can appreciate, already a nice refactoring, and we've only covered the first part of SOLID, the single responsibility principle. So to wrap up this video, I just want to show you how I tested this. And I've got a file here called test examples. It's also in the SRC directory. And I've written this file so that I can test each class independently of each other, as well as at the end, I test the entire thing together as an orchestration. And 
Um, you notice that I'm not using any testing framework. This is so that I can just basically quickly output console logs and just quickly quickly have a look in the console because I'm going through this refactoring process and I wanted to just output the tests in this fashion. As I mentioned before, in the conclusion directory, actually, there is a full set of tests written in Jest, and that will be the final screencast for this series, and I'll cover how I tested the final version of this application using Jest. So let's run the tests here now. So I've got inside the readme, if you take a look at the readme, we can go down. And we've got to hear how to run the tests. It's just as uh, simple as this, right? So we just go, uh, actually, no, we need to probably go into the single responsibility uh, folder first and then run this. TS node, by the way, is a handy little command that allows us to run TypeScript files without compiling them. All right, so I can uh, run that. And we can see that we get the output. So let's just very quickly have a look at this. First thing that you'll notice, first thing that you'll notice, which I think is important, is that we're able to very easily test each class independently of everything else. This is one of the main benefits, for, for, in my opinion. The ability to be able to test each of the class's behavior independently and separate from everything else is uh, hands down absolutely uh, critical and absolutely, absolutely a, a major, major, major benefit for keeping the application working and keeping it well tested. And as I mentioned, we'll see how we write jest tests in the final episode. But as we can see here, I'm just checking, I'm calling different logger methods to make sure that the output is correct, and I just check the output here, and I can see that, yeah, it looks, looks pretty, pretty okay. And then I go ahead and test the store cache class. Again, I create an instance of the store cache. I pass an instance of the logger. And then I start calling methods of the store cache class, and I check the output. So for example, here, I create or I add a, add a, a, a message to the cache, and then I check that it's, it's there. And we can see here that it looks, looks about right. And you can also see that the logging is taking place from the actual cache class as well. Um, I test the file store class in a similar way. This is the output. And I also, of course, finally test the full orchestration uh, at the end. So that's here. I test the manage store class. And there's only two methods to test on this, the save and the read method. And as you can see here, I tested those two methods. And, um, and actually, you'll see that the output comes in this folder here, SRC test files. You can see here that the message 99, message 99 saved via message store class. Let's have a look. It's, it's there, right? Uh, so it actually creates real files uh, as well when you run this. Uh, so it's actually running the actual code. And it looks like it's all working. So that actually wraps up our first screencast in the solid principles examples using TypeScript screencast for today. And um, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that you can like the video if you liked it, and please subscribe. Stay tuned for the next in the series for Solid Principles, and, um, and I'll see you in that video. Thank you very much, and see you there. Bye-bye.